Hello, what's good everyone? Today we're gonna react to Geography Now San Marino. Reagiamo alla geografia di San Marino. Why am I speaking Italian? Because that's the national language of San Marino, the little country inside of Italy. I am Italian and I'm sorry to say that. I feel really ashamed, but I don't know anything about this country. I have never been there. I have been countless times to Rimini for summer vacation. If some of you don't know about that city, it's a touristic spot right on the beach. It's very beautiful, it's very beautiful and very cheap. That's why there's people coming from all over Europe. That's a really beautiful place. You should, should definitely check it out. But anyway, uh, let me think about what I know. I know they speak Italian. They have Euro, the laws probably are the same as Italy. They are their own country, so they have their own national football team. The country, if I'm not wrong, is, is smaller than my town. And my town is one of the smallest towns of Northern Italy. That, that's all I know, that's all I know, I'm sorry. I know, oh, yeah, yeah, another thing, I know they have a casino. I know they have a casino. That's it, that's it. So we should just let this crazy guy, Barbato, I think his name is, talk about this beautiful country that we have to discover together. Imagine you're a dude running away from some guy trying to kill you. You escape pirates. James you start Bond. a new life on the beach. Then, just when beach life is going great, some crazy lady you never met claims that you her baby daddy and you just left without paying no damn child support. So you run away to the mountains. You build a fortress. Then a bunch of other runaways in a similar situation to yours join you and you become a community. In a <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy the way he... The way he... <laughs> the way he tells a story. That's crazy. That's crazy. He makes something, he make, it's so fun, it's so funny because he makes, um, he makes like history fun, like, uh, <laughs> it's crazy, it's crazy, it's crazy. Shout out to all the submarinese that will watch this video. Hope there's gonna be some, hope, hope. So I will say to them, grazie, iscrivetevi al canale per più reazioni su queste cose, sul vostro paese. In a very butchered, condensed format, that's basically how this place became a country. Welcome to the world's best hiding spot, keeping it down low, San Marino. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. Welcome to the fifth smallest country in the world, the oldest sovereign country in the world, with the oldest constitution, and the smallest republic. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, you guys have less land area, but you also have over a hundredest republic. What is that? Uh -huh. Is that country? I don't know that country. Um, uh, yeah, you guys have less land area, but you also have all Nauru. What is that? It seems like some kind of island from Polynesia, something like that. I don't know. Over 166,000 square miles of ocean territory, so... Wow, well, I actually won this round. Congrats, Nauru. Oh, and as you guys know, this video was shot during the COVID-19 pandemic times, so in compliance with social distancing practices, this video was shot in my office. Caleb and Jillian live here, so obviously... Wow, he has a lot of postcards. <laughs> wow. They are quarantining with me. They can be in these videos. Art is one of my closest neighbors. He is within walking distance, so he'll be a regular. Also, we are limiting our guest host to one a week, and this time, this week, it will be Hannah. How you doing, Hannah? What is that you are holding on to? And this week on Geography Now, we have merch. And uh, where can you get all this at, Hannah? Geographynow.com. I'm gonna leave the shirt on. I think it's good. Should we sure. match the whole time? If, if you want, sure, yeah. Wow. Listen, guys. We. How can? How can? I'm confused. How is it possible? Yesterday I checked out the uh, geography now Kazakhstan and now this one of San Marino is like double the length of the other one. Wow! How can there be so many things to speak about San Marino more than Kazakhstan? Well, Kazakhstan is a big country. Wow! It's pretty interesting. It's gonna be good. We take huge precautions with face masks, we have hand sanitizer, and we film all these segments in different time slots so we are avoiding crowds. Speaking of which, Hannah, you need some hand sanitizer. There you go. This is how Paul pays me. And I'm probably gonna steal some toilet paper on this my way out. Anyway, San Marino. Started by one guy, St. Marinus, or San Marino, oh, and it grew into that. the small, hard to find microstate that it is oh, today. Dude. Let's find it on the globe now, shall we? 
San Marino, sometimes called the most serene republic, is kind of like a miracle country. It was made from a bunch of people trying to escape persecution. And like, they've survived almost two millennia of dodging almost every major battle and war because the aggressors were like, Aw, you're so adorable and non-threatening. You know what, go ahead, I don't need to attack. Stay independent. In any case, they've held it together and kept their sovereignty locked down in the hills. And here's where they are. First of all, the country is completely landlocked yeah, yeah, within the country of Italy, straddling the borders of the Emilia-Romagna and Marche regions of Italy. At only 24 square miles or 61 square kilometers, they are the third smallest country in Europe after the Vatican and Monaco and have no former border control with Italy. The country is divided into nine municipalities or castelli, meaning castles, and the small capital with only about 4,000 people named like the country, San Marino, is located in the San Marino municipality. The capital sits on the western slope of the highest point of the country. Wow, 4,000, 4,000. If you, that's crazy, that's the capital, and uh, it's just 4,000 people. If you think my, my city, <laughs> wow, my city I think is like 9,000, it's, oh my god. It's not even the town, it's the city within the town. Wow, bigger than the capital with incredibly narrow hairpin turn roadways and a ridge trail that goes to the other two famous towers of San Marino. If you want to get there without driving, a good alternative would be taking the aerial cableway that starts in Borgo Maggiore at the bottom and goes up 166 meters to the top. As a landlocked nation, of course they have no seaports. They do have one incredibly small private airstrip in Toraccia, but for people wanting to take commercial flights, everything must be done through Rimini's Federico mm, Fellini really? International, about 15 kilometers away on the coast in Rimini, oh, Italy. Oh, this air oh my god, come on. I've been there countless times, like, I don't know, maybe like seven or eight times to Rimini for, for vacation at the beach and I've never been there, just 15 kilometers, come on. I feel ashamed, I feel ashamed of myself right now. Let's hope this video will make me want to visit this country now port works with San Marino and does actually have a granted customs for San Marino that visitors can use and report to. From there, the only way in is by road on one of the many entrances from all sides of the surrounding Italian border. The busiest one being the Italian SS-72 highway into Dogana. Keep in mind, the country actually used to be even smaller, but in 1320, the wow. community of Chiesa Nuova joined, and in 1463, four other communities joined, Faitano, Fiorentino, Monte Giardino, and Seravale. Since since then, the border has not changed and they've stayed the same size from then on. Small country, but it's got everything it needs. So by now, you're probably wondering. Okay, for real though, how on earth did they avoid not getting absorbed by Italy? Well, for one, as the story goes, St. Marinus, or San Marino, was a simple Christian stonemason from the island of Rab in the Dalmatian coast. Back in those days, the Roman emperors were actively killing Christians and Diocletian had a target on Dalmatia. San Marino ran to Rimini, started a whole new life on the beach, then some crazy lady, or lady, depending on which version of the story you heard, claimed he was their estranged husband that left them. Annoyed by this, he ran to the mountains and built a monastery as a hermit. From there, other persecuted Christians heard of this mountain safe haven, and they began to congregate there and built a fort. Originally, wow, all this land cool. belonged to Lady Felicita, a Roman noblewoman. One day, her son got sick, and St. Marinus supposedly had the gift of healing people and healed her son. In gratitude, she gave the mountain to him and his community. So according to the story, that's basically how the country started. Before he died, though, St. St. Marinus's last words to his people were, uh, I leave you free from both men. Wait, what? <sighs> Most people assume he was referencing the Pope and the Emperor. This was kind of like the inspirational driving force that led the people of San Marino to maintain their sovereignty. Eventually, they wrote their constitution, the oldest one on earth, the Lege Statue Republicae Sancti Marini, which is actually six books written in Latin in the 16th century. Yeah, San Marino, it's not just a community of farmers in the random hills. It's a community driven by the inspiration of a saint that encouraged them to hold on to the reins of their own domain. And it worked. Anyway, if you decide to visit San Marino, some of the top places to check out the Basilica of San Marino, the Liberty Square and statue, the Sacello di San Marino. If you want collector's coins or stamps on your passport, go to the tourism office, the Crossbow Quarry Cavern, Monte wow. Ceretto Park and Adventure Park, the Museum of Vampires wow. and Werewolves, <laughs> Old Cervale Castle, the Passage of Witches, the wow. Museum of Weapons and Cesta, the Torture Museum, the Museum of Curiosities, the Ancient Arms Museum, the San Francis Museum, the Wow, they have lots of museums for a small country like that. Wow.
the State Museum, That's and the most notable site of the country, the Torre Guaita, and her two sisters, Tower Chesta and the smallest Montale, which Montale is not open to the public. And everywhere you go in the country, you see statues and tributes to San Marino himself. See how many you can find. So yeah, as you can see, San Marino is a myriad of quirky and traditional sites. No idea why they have a vampire museum, but it works. Let them have their fun. In any case, within those 23 square miles, 61 square kilometers, they still have quite a few natural sites. Which brings us to... Now, we've done microstates on this channel before, and when you have a very limited amount of space, you're probably gonna have to find ways to make money that don't require massive farm fields. San Marino has their own way of playing the game. First of all, the country is entirely mountainous, located in the Apennine mountain chain that creates the spine of the Italian peninsula extending all the way north to south. This mountain chain is essentially part of the smaller thrust fault lines that push from the Adriatic lithosphere, or microplate, which explains why sometimes minor tremors and earthquakes might occur, but nothing too serious. As mentioned in the center, where the capital lies, is the limestone mass and highest point of the country, Mount Titano, at about 740 meters high. Mm, From that, these hills flow many small creeks and rivers, like the Ausa, Marano, and Fiumicello rivers, and bisecting the country in the southwest side is the appropriately named San Marino River. The country does not have any major natural inland bodies of water. The closest thing would probably be Lago de Faitano, a small artificial body of water used for sport fishing near the border of the Faitano area. Otherwise, as you can see in the valleys, farms and ranches dominate the remainder of the landscape. Fun fact, because of Mount Titano, sometimes San Marino is also called the Titanic Republic. San Marino is a country that knows how to handle things. They have no external debt, they actually have a budget surplus, and they get somewhere around 3.2 million tourists a year. About a hundred wow. times their entire population. And despite agriculture not being- but, I mean, I mean, I don't know, 3, 3 million a year is not that much, because if you think, if you think about it, like, uh, Many people that would travel, like I, like I said, I would do, go to Rimini for vacation. You know, there's like a little country that not many people has heard about. So you're already there in vacation, it's just 15 kilometers away. Of course you're gonna check it out. Just me, I'm the only crazy guy that haven't done so. So I think all those tourists, they come like in the, um, they come like in the summer when they go to, to the beach. I, I think this number doesn't impress me that much. It should be way higher, way higher. A real principal industry, I mean, with their limited area. About three quarters of their land is given to permanent agriculture, and about 17% of their land is arable. And with that, it is now time for my triple shot of espresso break. Usually Noah comes in, but Noah obviously can't be here because we can only have one guest host, Hannah. So that means mm -hmm. Art is going to have to fill in for today. Yeah. Hey guys. Now for San Marino, the real money comes from three main sources. Banking and finance, the largest company in the country, is Agricola, as well as business and tourism. About half the economy in itself is based on tourism, making about a quarter of the GDP. And sales tax is actually half of what it is in Italy. This is why so many wow. people love coming here for shopping, especially stamping. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Wow. But it makes sense, it makes sense. I see on eBay, Italian eBay, they have some people from San Marino doing business, so probably that's why. Coin enthusiasts for the rare collectible San Marino Lira discontinued after switching to the Euro, even though they're not even part of the EU. In addition, if you go to the outskirts along the country's borders, you'll often see massive warehouses or factories owned by outside companies. This is because San Marino only taxes corporate profit at 19%, 5% capital gains, and 13% withholding tax interest. Contrast that with Italy's 24%, which is higher than the EU's average around 22%. Hmm, I like this guy. In addition, San Marino is known to have some quirky items that are actually otherwise illegal to buy outside the country, like guns and weaponry, like swords and crossbows, things that can kill you. Why am I thinking about murder? <laughs> <laughs> we just talked about weapons that could murder you. Oh, that's right. San Marino actually has the highest rate of car ownership in the world, and it is the wow. only country with more cars than people. Are they rich over there? It was no. like Monaco, remember we did- but yeah, yeah, also Malta, also Malta. I lived in Malta for two years and I can tell you there's more cars than people in Malta. Come on, the traffic is crazy over there. The Monaco country? Yeah. Um, not as rich as Monaco though. Otherwise, we yeah, one of, one of the Monaco, Monaco, I don't know. I, I, probably there's not even one person that was born in Monaco. People just go there because it's a paradise. Like they, they don't want to pay taxes, so they won't go there, purchase Ferraris, Lamborghinis. Whatever. It's not really a country that has an history, like uh, the only history that has, like, uh, not paying taxes. 
Probably. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Hills and cliffs, you can still find some pretty cool wildlife. And with that, we are going to go to Gary Harlow. He's actually not here right now, so who do we have, Paul? Hannah's going to have to fill in this time. Um, I need a hat. Um, I got this thing from Morocco. San Marino is a tiny nation, but by no means devoid of nature. I shouldn't be doing this accent. No, it's terrible, <laughs> Hannah. <laughs> For one, you'll find animals that are common throughout Italy and Southern Europe. Their abundance of grasslands, rivers, and creeks give a home to mammals like cross foxes, hedgehogs, horseshoe bats, otters, and the least weasel, known as the smallest carnivore on the planet. Don't let the little guy's red coat with white belly and small, cute, stubby snout fool you. When it's time for mating season, they have some My of the most God, violent courtships documented in the mammal world. In addition, about 96 species of birds can be found migrating and nesting, everything from swans, European honey buzzards, peregrine falcons, barn owls, and spotted woodpeckers. And that's all for Gary Harlow. Thank you, Hannah Harlow, or uh, yeah, whatever so your name is for this segment. I don't, I honestly don't care. And now we finish off this segment as we always do with what? With f -f food, baby, food. Man, the food is gonna be the same as Emilia Romagna, I guess, no? Lasagna, uh, pasta la bolognese, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> you like food art? Yeah, I do, I love food. <laughs> <laughs> now, as you might suspect, San Marino's cuisine is very similar to that of Italy's. Of course, yeah, you will find gross. pasta and pizza around every corner. But they do have their own specialties as well. Capoletti, pastatelli, ciambella, bustrengo, San Marino-style lasagna, and pentalacchia liquor, oh, oh, oh. pentatelli, ciambella, bus bustrengo, what is that? Bustrengo, San, San Marino-style lasagna. I said... I don't know what it, what is that? Let me know down in the comments. What is that on top? I don't understand how is it made from. It seems the same the same as traditional lasagna from Bologna, but I don't understand what's on top the crust. It looks very delicious anyway. Who did that? I don't care what's inside. San Marino style lasagna and pentalacchia liquor. And these cakes are sold everywhere, but they're just kind of like a, you know, gimmick snack thing for tourists. And many might consider the national dish piadina. <laughs> that looks pretty good. It looks like an Italian taco. Yes, even a small country can have. If you have been to Rimini and you haven't ate piadina, come on, what are you doing? What have you been doing there? Come on, that's like the most delicious snack that could possibly be. Sweet. Salty, come on, whatever you put inside that, it's like a crab, it's the same thing essentially. It's just different, the bread they use. That's amazing, that's really good. Have their own charm and flair, like the people in their culture, which brings us to... Thank you for filling in, Art. Here, um, of course. hand sanitizer, uh, wash your hands. All right, you're... Not that dirty, but... You always will be to me. By the way, the people here are called Samaranese. There's no N, not San Marin... Oh! Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, wait, did I say San Marinesi or... No, 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 I haven't, I haven't said that. Allora, San Marinesi, San Marinesi, San Marinesi all'ascolto, iscrivetevi al canale se vi piace il video. Non ho detto San Marinesi. Okay, 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 let's go. Marinese, San Marinese, two M's. Got it? Good. Throughout history, the Samaritans have had a saying, Noti a noi, ignoti agli altri. Know ourselves, but unknown to others. The Samaritans are kind of like proud of their distinct identity, rooted in unfamiliarity. In any case, this is how you break down the population. The country is made up of about 34,000 people and is the fifth smallest country in population on earth. The country is predominantly Samaritans at about 86%, whereas the remaining population at about 4,800 inhabitants, or about 14% of the country, are foreign born, mostly from Italy and Romania, as well as other parts of Europe. Keep in mind, there are about 12,000 Samaritans nationals in diaspora, mostly in Italy, France, and the USA. They use the Euro as their currency, they use the types C, F, and L plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, when it comes to identity, although yes, the national language of San Marino is Italian, and many Samaritans people have Italian ancestry, regardless, do not call these people Italians. They are very proud of their Samaritans heritage. I mean, when you're part of an exclusive club with 
less people than the maximum capacity during peak season at Disneyland, you're kind of special. <laughs> By the way, as a Californian, I gotta say, Disneyland is so overrated. Don't even bother with that place. Six Flags, way better. Anyway, for what it's worth, being Samaritanese comes with a lot of unique traditions and customs. For one, the majority of the country, at somewhere around 97%, claim to be affiliated with the Catholic Church. I mean, shocker, they were founded by a saint. However, there is no Episcopal See in San Marino, and they actually fall under the Diocese of Montefeltro in Italy. If you don't know what that is, basically the Catholic Church kind of like organizes their churches in worldwide districts called dioceses. It's confusing, even I don't get it, and I actually have an uncle who's a Franciscan friar under the Capuchin order. Anywha, San Marino is also noted for their unique government system. They are one of only three diarchies in the world, as in countries that have two official heads of state, and they've been doing it since 1243. These heads of state wow. are known as Captain Regents. They are chosen by council no members that are voted that. in every five years. The Captain Regents must be at least 25 years old, and their terms That's last so cool. only six months, which makes it the shortest head of state term limit on earth. They are allowed to have unlimited terms afterwards, but they have to wait three years until they can be reelected. And this also means San Marino has had the highest number of female heads of state out of any country in the world. Anyway, what makes San Marino distinct culturally? Well, that brings us to Random Hannah with Culture Stuff. All right, guys, it is good to be back. San Marino is a country that definitely honors its traditional medieval side. In July, during the Revocation Festival, you can see the flag throwing performances everywhere. And when a new set of captain regents are voted in in either April or October, they have the investor ceremony. The largest national festival would probably be on September 3rd though, the National Feast of San Marino. Samaritanese people are also known for kind of being weapon enthusiasts, hence why they have so many weapon shops. Their specialty? The cr well, you never know if you live in a small country like that, <laughs> that, that somebody's gonna try to conquer you. I mean, not not nowadays, but <laughs> you know, back in the days for sure. You never know, like uh, people never wanted to conquer you, but if they're gonna try, you gotta defend yourself, right? Crossbow. Oh, that's so cool. They even have a crossbow corps of about 80 members that train and dress up in medieval clothing and perform regularly at festivals year round. For sports, this is where things get a little interesting. In Europe, when. Come on, why? 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 You have been talking about all the good things of San Marino. Why do you have to bring football into this? This is humiliating for them. Come on, of course it's an honor. It's like uh, normal people, no, workers playing football against uh, many... I guess, I don't know, they play against everyone in Europe, you know, during the qualification for the European Cup. And they always lose a lot, of course, they're not professional players. There was one, though, Selva. He was the only professional player. I don't know if there was other before. I'm just speaking of, <laughs> since I was born. That's what I know. But anyway, they, <laughs> they lose every game and really badly, really badly. But that's normal. You see, just 34,000 people. How, how are you going to find over 34,000 people 20 good football players. That's impossible, right? Whenever San Marino plays football or soccer, it's kind of like, Yes! Yeah! But not for the <laughs> reasons you'd think. I am so gonna win money by betting against them! See, their national yeah, yeah, soccer... Yeah. You can't win any money. You can't win any money. The only... I can tell you because I like to bet sometimes. And the only bet they will allow you to do, to place, is gonna be over four... over four goals or handicap less than four goals, like the other team will win with more than four goals of difference against San Marino. That's the only bet they let you play. Soccer slash football team debuted in 1990, and since then has only won one game against Liechtenstein in oh, 2004. Man. This makes them officially the worst team, not only in Europe, but in the whole world. Their starting lineups often have few actual professional players, and they even had an accountant as their goalie once. However, what they lack in footwork, yeah, they make up right. in arm work. Their baseball team is much is better. Oh, They've been champions in Italy four times, won two Italian Cups, and oh, three European that. Championship Leagues. In addition, they have a strong... Yeah, coach. oh my god. Simoncelli. I think he was from San Marino. Oh my god. Come on, please tell me it's not him. Rest in peace. Motorcycle racing and often perform very well at Grand Prix events, mostly practicing at the Rimini Coast Racetrack. 
And finally, some Maronese people are lovers. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, I don't, I'm not sure if it was from somebody in the Simon Chad. I'm not sure, but there was, yeah, there always was like a good. Uh, but you know, the the, the best ones from, but uh, the best one in uh, motor racing, how you call that, MotoGP. They are from all from Emilia Romagna, so that makes sense. They are from San Marino as well, the good ones, and they won a lot. They are very good at the. First of classical art and music. Me too. For classic music, these two composers are highly regarded figures. You know what I just realized? This is kind of the music segment. I just took over Keith's segment. I think I won the feud. Keith, haha. I guess that's it for you now, Hannah. Um, social distancing push. I got the mic. All right, and with that, it's time for the history segment. We already kind of explained the origins of this country, so let's just kind of skip forward to the 15th century. 1463, the country gains its last new territories, which are the current borders. 1503, it was taken over by this guy for about six months. 1543, this dude tried to take over, but got lost in fog. Occupied again in 1739 by the papal governor of Ravenna. Napoleonic years, Napoleon actually kind of liked San Marino and offered to extend their territory, but they declined. During the Union years, Garibaldi and his wife took refuge in San Marino. He promised they could stay independent after Italy became united. World War I, World War II, they tried to stay as neutral as possible, but still got bombed. They actually became communist for a few years. They joined the UN, OECD, and the Council of Europe. Tourism and sales of cheesy souvenirs skyrocket. And here we are today. Some of the most notable and famous people of this country that you guys suggested I mention include composer, playwright, and bishop Francesco Maria Marini, Maria. 60s and 70s icon pop star Little- Little Tony was from San Marino. Come on! Are you kidding me? I had no idea. Little Tony, Olympian Alessandra Perelli, four-time Eurovision no, no. singer Valentina Moneta, Captain no, no. Regent Assunta Tina Maloney, these no, no. soccer players Marco Macina, Simone Pacini, and Davide Simoncini, Grand Prix motorcyclists Manuel Poggiali and Alex De Angelis. Angelis. So there you go. Not oh. bad for. A Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, <laughs> I said something stupid. That Simon Chelli so is not from, was not from San Marino. The Angels, the Angels was actually the one I was gonna try to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was very really good. Country that has fewer people than Bob Saget has had family members on his TV career. And speaking of family, that brings us to. <laughs> Now, as we kind of already explained, much of San Marino's very existence depended greatly on their ability to avoid and get away from conflict. They've always had to kind of talk their way out of trouble. I like what Samaritan's geography Diego says. He says, I think this is maybe the most beautiful thing about us, the victory of words over arms. That's cool, I like that. But that doesn't mean San Marino is a total hermit. They definitely roll with their crew. For one, they have three embassies, including the Military Order of Malta, which is not actually a real country, but it kind of is, but that's a whole other story. And and eight honorary consulates within their country and over 85 non-resident embassies and consulates abroad. In addition, they actually have a very interesting connection to all the other microstates of Europe, like Andorra, Liechtenstein, Monaco, and Malta. All these countries take part in the games of smaller states of Europe, which also include mm, larger small yes, states yes, like Luxembourg, yes. Cyprus, Montenegro. I, I remember that in Malta. When I was in Malta, I remember that happened. Yeah, I, I didn't watch it. I don't know how it is, but I know that it exists. In Iceland. Even the Vatican is invited and set to possibly take part for the first time in 2021. Generally, other Catholic nations like to nod their heads at San Marino in respect when they see the pride and perseverance of a tenacious little guy that outlasted all of them. Croatia especially has a soft spot since the founder of San Marino was from Rob Island off their Dalmatian coast, which interestingly enough, people from Poland and Russia are very frequent visitors, so much to the point where many shopkeepers... Come on, that's not surprising at all. When you go to Croatia, it's mostly Russian people. Of course, they're gonna make a stop there. It's just 15 kilometers away. You just told that. That's not surprising at all. And many Polish people live in Italy and travel to Italy, so come on. That's not really impressive in San Marino are actually able to communicate in these languages, which wow. pleases the customers. Even more interesting, Iran has close ties to San Marino, business-wise at least, as Iran-based airlines that head to Europe often stop over in Rimini Airport under the San Marino wow. Authority side because San Marino is one of the only few European countries that has a refueling agreement with Iran. When it comes to their best friends, oh, however, okay, it's really no sense. shocker, Italy usually ranks number one. Italians, especially from the Romagna region, and the Samaritanese are essentially one family. They are culturally similar, 
They share many of the same values. Yeah, they, they, they have the same accent as well. They have the same accent and they can speak in their own dialect as well. People often commute to each other's countries for work and school. Intermarriages are very common. And overall, they get each other the best. In conclusion, San Marino kind of started out as a country from a dude that wanted to escape constant trouble. Little did he know that 1700 years later, millions of people would be visiting every year, lining up to check out wacky vampire museums and buying guns and crossbows from the money they made from betting against their soccer football team. Oh, but you can buy, you can buy these guns and then they will let you, I mean, yeah, of course, of course. I don't think there's gonna be any custom going out of the country, of course. San Marino, keeping a low profile in the coolest way possible. Stay tuned, Saltome and Principe is coming up next. Wow. <laughs> wow. That was crazy. That was crazy. That was crazy. So, so many, su such a lot of history for such a small country. Wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. I didn't know about, uh, about sports, like they had some uh, Olympic champions. They had the baseball, they were good in baseball. I didn't know all those kind of stuff. Also other people famous from there, I didn't know. I just knew the, some football players that were listed before. They didn't mention Selva. I, I think he's the, um, um, how to say, the best scorer of the national football team of, uh, of Sabarino. And another interesting fact, I think he, he was playing, if I'm not wrong, I think he was playing for the San Marino football team that, uh, that plays also in an Italian football league, in a lower league, but still plays in Italy. I think he was playing for both the national team and the San Marino football team in Italy. Uh, they didn't mention that, maybe I'm wrong. But I think that he's the best scorer of the national team. So we should have mentioned it, unless I'm wrong. <laughs> But anyway guys, thank you for watching, hope you liked the video, make sure to subscribe and tell me what more should I react to, that is of San Marino or other countries that you want me to check out. So thank you for watching and have a nice day.